So again, we're looking at what is our x and what is our y. Y is our input, and that's what we call independent. I'm sorry, x is our input and independent. Y then is our output. And what do you think this is as far as independent and dependent? And this is where some of the confusion comes through about y over x, et cetera. And you'll see how this connects to what we know about y divided by x equals k in just a moment. What this means is because y is the dependent, y depends on x. And we're going to rewrite that with blanks underneath it. If y depends on x, we want to figure out in our problem what depends on what. And let's look at the problem again. A trucker drove 170 miles, one miles in three hours. What here depends on what? The miles he drives depends on the hours. If he drives zero hours, he's going to be driving zero miles. Now yesterday, you guys were starting to fill in tables and you wanted to put the Y on the top of the table because we've done so much with Y divided by X gives us K. That's giving us our constant. A table is giving us our inputs and our outputs. This is figuring out, well, if he drives 171 miles in three hours, how many miles does he drive in one hour? Remember, we want to always try to, for the constant, get it down to the unit rate. So in this case, we're going to say that our word ratio is, if y is the miles, we're going to divide it by the hours to figure out our constant of proportionality, because that's the question we're first being asked in the verbal. And the constant of proportionality is our k, right? So you guys have a calculator. We're going to reset this up as a ratio of 171 over what? Three. Go ahead and divide that and tell me what you get. 57? No decimal? Just straight up 57? Okay. So the question is, what is our constant of proportionality? It's 57 miles in one hour, or 57 really is our constant. Now that we have this number, we can turn our paper over, and now we can really start working with this. Because the question is, what is our constant? Our constant is 57. And if we want to be good and label it, we could just put miles per hour. I want to see a thumbs up if you're understanding so far what we just did with just the words here. Who's with me? Okay. Now, this equation part says, what is the x? Well, what did we decide the x was? It's the time, it's the independent, and it's the hours. And what did we decide our y is? It's the distance, or in this case, miles. Our equation, then, is going to be y is equal to 57 times x. If he drives one hour, we're going to do 57 times 1, and we're going to get 57. As we know, if he drives 3, it's going to be 57 times 3, and we're going to get back to that 171. Right? But I also gave you some hints. Remember this part? So let's look at what the hint is for Station 7 or Problem 7. It's starting to fill your table in. Tables always have an x first and a y second because the x is the input and the y is the output. And people were thinking yesterday, but y goes over x. Yes, if we're trying to find the constant, but if we're trying to fill in a table, we put in the input first, we multiply it by our rule, and then we get our output. So I'm going to put this here again, and let's see if we can copy this down. Our input is hours or time, and our output is distance in what measurement in this one? 
miles. And it's giving us some numbers that we can just fill into the table. We've got two and five. And then it's also giving us eight on the input and an output of 399. No, because there's not a change between here and here. Okay. We're not looking for a change between this to this and this to this. We're looking at if I have two hours and my rule is 57 times X, well, what's 57 times 2? 114. And what's 57 times 5? 285. This is our rule because it's also our equation. These all go together. How did we find this? Because we went back to what we know. Y divided by X gives us the constant, but then we can use that constant and multiply it by any input. What if he drives for 8 hours? Four, five, six. Now we've got this 399. What do you guys think we have to do to try to find this? Divided by the 57. And what are you getting? Seven. So if he drives seven hours, it's 399 miles. Is this starting to make more sense? And then there's the graph. Now, honestly, if you were working on problem eight over here, the hint is the graph. And so sometimes you're going to get the graph instead of the table. Sometimes it's going to give you the equation as your hint. This one does not give us the graph, so we're going to graph it together. And I know we haven't had tons of practice in graphing, so I want to make this really clear. This line is what? The x or the y? X. Which means it's our input. And what is our input? Time. time. So let's write time down here. I'm putting it down here because there's not a lot of room to write up here. And the time here is in hours. We always want to label our graphs. What numbers are going to go up here? Our output, which is our y, and what is that going to be? Distance. And we're going to write distance in miles. We always start with this here being zero. And can I label my time by one, two, three, four, five? No. Look at the numbers. It goes up to what? There's room to put one through eight here, isn't there? Yeah. You always want to look at your graph and say, am I going to have to count by twos or tens or something? I think in this case, we can just go zero, one, two, three, four. So let's label that. I went all the way up to 10. You don't need to. You could stop at eight. The distance goes up to 456 miles. I think we should probably do that by 50s. So we're going to start here at zero. The first line has to be 50, 100, and just keep going by 50s. And we want to put points on for all of our time. We know if he drives zero hours, it's going to be zero miles. If he drives two, it's going to be what? Okay. So we're going to go over to two and up to what looks like it might be about 114. I'm going to put it about here. There's a little guessing here because we're counting by 50s and that's kind of a big distance. And then we're going to go over to 5, and it's what? So here's 5, almost all the way up to 300, about here. Is that starting to look like it's making a straight line? Yeah. What about 7? It's like practically at 400, right? 399. 
And then we're going to go to 8 and go up to what? 456. We know a couple of other points on this line from our, our verbal problem. What number should we put for three hours? It's not in our table, but can we graph it to make sure we're getting a straight line? Yeah. We could. Three is going to be 171. Do we know the answer for one hour? One hour is? 57. Now that's really starting to look like a straight line, even though we kind of guessed. Looks like I might have been off a little bit here because it's not quite as straight. But it's a straight line through the origin. And that's how we do one problem. Really start by focusing on the verbal part. Read through the problem, use the space I left you on the back of the page to work through and find your constant. If you have your constant, you're going to have your rule. And then there's going to be some hint that's going to help you with one of the pieces. So if you're stuck, go ahead and use the hint and see if that'll help you figure it out. And if you're really stuck, don't just sit there. Check with me. You're working with your partner. Excuse me? Yep. Our goal today is to get all 12 of these done.